so, um, you know, the thing is, is that when you're uh, working in any style, you have to learn the correct way to phrase, the way to shape the melodies. So uh, I think this, there was a story that I once heard. It, it sounds actually like a, like a joke, but there were two klezmer musicians who showed up to play a wedding. Um, and uh, when they showed up, it was a, 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 a orthodox wedding, a very religious wedding. And that meant that the men and women danced in different rooms. So you had an accordion player and a clarinet player. Well, the accordion player was fine. The accordion player has melody, harmony, rhythm, no problem. But the clarinet player, what is the clarinet player going to do for four hours all by, you know, themselves with a room full of dancing people? So the thing I think that's important about klezmer phrasing is that you get uh, the sense of the rhythm and the dance in it. Um, so for example, if you play the tune that I just played, if you play it, you know, kind of one, two, three, four, one, two. You know, it sort of plods along. But if you get the inner swing of the music, and of course, um, in, in the Bulgar rhythm, you have the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, um, sort of implied uh, in like um, the trombone line. So you get this great composite rhythm going. So, you know, on top of it, you can't really play. It just sounds horrible, but if you if you get uh, the kind, can feel the inner swing. And a good way to practice, actually, so you you know is to stomp your foot in the rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. You know, so you get that, you can actually get that in your body. And then, the ideal, almost like when you read Plato, you know, and Plato has the forms of like pure love or you know, uh, these kinds of ideal forms. The same thing, one of the great, the forms, one of the ideals in klezmer music is to be able to play and make people dance for four hours straight with just the instrument. So for example, if you play a slower tune that has a rhythm like bump, 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 and you play, You know, no one's going to dance to that, but if you play... You know, you kind of feel the swing of it. And I think actually phrasing is really about dynamics. And what, I, and what I've been talking to my students a lot about is what I call microdynamics. You know, sometimes we see a crescendo, that's the kind of the macro dynamic. From point A to point B, you get louder. Or, or with a diminuendo, you get softer. But the, uh, the, that's a macro dynamic, but the micro dynamics are the little dynamics, so, you know, where you, you don't go... Right. So the little stresses and the little accents are linked to microdynamics. So, anyway, that's just a little food for thought. And again, going back to a point I made earlier, it's about listening to a lot of uh, 
old recordings, primary source recordings, recordings made by Eastern European Jewish immigrants who came to the United States in the 1920s and 30s. And checking those recordings out like, your, like you would uh, uh, work with, uh, you know, Rosetta or Berlitz or one of those language uh, courses and really learn the language as deeply as you possibly can. Then you can do whatever you want with it. Thank you.